What's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Today is a bit of a special day because we've came up to JDA Retro Services because, well, I've purchased a very important part for my Escort but also they've invited me up to take a look around their workshop and show you guys what they offer. We're up here this morning with Darren and Jacob. Darren, this is your Mark II Escort. Yeah, that's all right. It's more of a labour of love than... Uh... Yeah. Most other things, I guess. Yeah. Um, my wife calls it my midlife crisis because I spent so much time and money building it. <laughs> um, I've owned it for a very long time. It's probably the third car that I ever owned. Right. So under the bonnet, I don't really like putting modern engines in old cars. Yeah, um, yeah. I've got a passion for the older stuff, even though I do understand all the modern stuff. Yeah. It just costs a lot more money. So this engine here, when it was on the engine dyno, when it was first built, made just over 200 brake horsepower. Wow and we're just doing a couple of modifications now and we're hoping to see about 215 maybe even possibly 220. great so that's what we're aiming for so what block is it uh well because of the 205 snobbery mm -hmm. i deliberately used a good two liter block right because so many people say you've got to have a 205 you've got to have a 205 yeah um that is correct because to find a good two liter block it's difficult because normally they're corroded inside just because yeah. they're older. Mm -hmm. um, they're slightly lighter. It doesn't yeah. make much difference. Yeah. But we built it with a two litre block just to say when people say, oh, what's that? And we say it's 200 horsepower and then they start asking questions. They're like, why did you use a two litre block? We just like to be different. Moving on into the interior now, what can you tell us about the interior of the Mark II Escort? Okay, so we just wanted to make it look period. Mm -hmm. There are some modern touches, but they're very subtle and they're hidden. If we look at the seats, they look like they're roll top Recaros, um, as fitted to the Mark II Mexico, which are my favorite style of seat. I prefer them to the fishnets. These though are actually Mark III RS 1600i seats that have been re-trimmed in the beta cloth. Um, the reason why I chose these is they have bigger bolsters, they're more comfortable. Um, but you do need to do some extra work because you have to swap the uh, recliner wheel from one side to the other so they work in the Mark II Escort properly um, and all the tilt mechanism is on the right side as well. And what about these harnesses then? Well, they're actually modern harnesses, so you're probably too young to remember, but Britax yeah. was really popular um, in most race cars and fast road rally cars and things like that. Um, so these are a modern harness and we had these labels made and we swapped them over because we wanted to give the car the period look. So yep. we fitted new stuff, but we don't want anything to look modern in yeah. the car. No, I like that, yeah. Sort of like the period look, but still with the modern harnesses that are nice and safe. I can see there's a few more special touches around the dash area. Do you want to tell us a bit more about them? Yeah, so the um, steering wheel is a genuine original RS steering wheel. Um, they're not cheap in this condition. The clocks, um, so that's a, a set of RS clocks, original Mark II RS clocks. But what we did with those is there was a guy that would reface the rev counter for us. I mean, it's got a special engine in this car, it does rev quite high, I think 8.2 is the maximum RPM. Right. So they normally went to 7,000 and what we had was a new face put on, so it looks original but it goes to 9,000 and it's recalibrated to suit the engine as well. I've just noticed down here as well, Darren, this is a funny looking uh, ignition key. Yeah, so we don't use an ignition key. What that is, is it's a replica of the Rothmans Works rally cars, what they use for an ignition switch. Right. Um, so it's just another subtle touch. And we've also got a group four column in there as well, which doesn't use a, a, a steering column lock as on, the, on the column. So the pedal box we're using is a Gartrek pedal box. Uh, in my opinion, they make the best pedal boxes for a Mark II. Uh, the cheaper ones, generally people have lots of trouble. They're not cheap, but they basically work out the box. Basically what that allows us to do is we can adjust the brakes front to rear, depending on, on the conditions we're driving the car, and we can more tune the brakes um, to how we're gonna drive the car, basically. And I have just spotted a set of Waffle original mats. Well, now what are they off of? Well, they did used to come or be available as an accessory for the Mark II Escorts. Um, these are genuine Ford waffle mats, not for a Mark II Escort, unfortunately. Uh, but there was a seller on eBay that had a stock of them, probably had a stock take or was having a clear out at an old Ford dealership. And they're actually from a Mark II Transit, 
but they period to what was available yeah and uh, they fit reasonably well so they look good in the car the roll cage um it's a safety devices cage but i didn't want to uh, bulk through the floor after yeah. all that work that we did restoring the car yeah um and i didn't want to weld it in either in case i changed my mind and wanted to take it back out mm -hmm. so i fabricated some boxes and shortened the cage um so basically though they're welded to the floor Mm -hmm. so there's no holes in the floor and i can just unbolt the cage and it's quite subtle really you don't really notice yeah what we've done there the gear lever itself um we're using a work style um gear knob yeah just another nod to the rally cars a little bit subtle and then it's basically it's a quick shift lever but we actually build these in house because these are a low noise item right inherently the type 9 lots of people have got these gear levers and they complain about them buzzing and rattling yeah I've and, heard about and, that. and they vibrate yeah um, and basically because it's a steel shaft it just acts like an amplifier so we modify the bearing right. um, and do some work on them well, we sell loads of them to be honest That's brilliant and we even do a retrofit kit so if you've got the right, right type of lever yeah we can sell you the parts to make your lever low noise so that you don't have to buy a complete item. As we move from the interior of the Mark II Escort, we're gonna check out the boot. But just before we do that, Darren was just explaining about this fuel cap. Yeah, so it's not actually a fuel cap. It's actually a fuel cap blank. So these were fitted as standard to Australian cars and probably in other markets where they had to have a long range tank. Obviously in Australia, if you're in the outback, you can't just get to the fuel station. So they yeah, fit yeah. a bigger capacity fuel tank, yeah. which you would fill the car from the boot. Yeah. So because of the style of the car, I didn't want to weld that up. I didn't want to put a fuel cap on that didn't work. So it's actually a genuine part. I had to buy it from Australia. Yeah. Um, and it basically fits where your filler neck would fit and it bolts in. So it's removable and we've not modified the car at all. In the rear window, there's also a period dealer sticker with their company on it. Right, let's have a look at the boot then. Okay, so as you would spot straight away, Darren's kept the original fuel tank. It's no longer a fuel tank. Uh, we've got a uh, custom made fuel tank in the back of the car anyway. Uh, but what I decided to do, I've had escorts most of my life as a, as a kid. I used to put a tool bag in the back, used to swing around, fly about in the back when you're driving as an escort would be driven. Yeah. Then all the rear quarters, obviously I didn't want that to happen. So what I did is, um, made sure we got rid of all the fuel vapor first i'm not recommend anyone does it so no. if you hurt yourself when you copy it <laughs> that's all on you um but i cut open the fuel tank um i put this door on it um and there's a ledge that that fits to it's all held in with disease fasteners now inside this um we're not going to open it now it's a little bit fiddly with the fuel system on there i've got my plumbed in fire extinguisher at the bottom right. there's a aluminium shelf yeah um and inside i've got things like a toe strap wheel brace yeah. a few minor tools i mean if it really breaks down we're going to get picked up anyway but yeah that's where we keep all our tool kit that's brilliant um, and it just looks standard now luckily darren's got the escort up on the ramp so we can see underneath and i think you'll all agree that it's absolutely mint now we're just checking it out and uh, i was asking darren about this axle setup so do you want to tell us a little bit more about that I was set the challenge that you'd never get eight inch wheels underneath a standard arch escort. Yeah. And I do like a challenge. So um, this is basically an Anglia axle with quite a lot of modifications. Yeah, yeah. Um, we built the axle in house. Um, we strengthened the axle. Mm -hmm. We've added a drain bung, which is yeah. nice. You don't have to pull the diff if you want to change the oil. Yeah. Um, We've still got leaf springs on the on the axle mm -hmm. because I wanted to keep a rear seat and I didn't want to fall link it. We do run tramp bars and a panel rod as well, but I've removed them at the moment because I'm making them adjustable. They're normally yeah. fixed, yeah. but I want them adjustable. So with the lowering of the car, it's actually lowered four inches on the back, which right, is quite okay. low. Yeah. Um, we use these fixed shackle um, or fixed height sh uh, axle shackles for the leaf springs. Yeah. Um, Butcher Engineering will make these for us here at, to spec. Um, we've ordered them all on um, but this gives much better positive location for the axle so yeah. with a lowering block it can move the bolt stretch yeah, um, yeah. i've even had one come out before when right. i was younger um, and then we're using two piece 3j shafts and then we've got a 3j nxg limited slip diff with right. an alley housing as well we just come down the escort now and one thing that i started looking at straight away was this gearbox mount this has been done so nicely do you want to tell us a bit more about it 
Yeah, so when we um, restored the car, we put an auto tunnel in just to give us some more room. I think yeah. you've done that on your cars. Yeah, right? I have. But I don't like any of the off-the-shelf solutions to fit a Type 9 in the car. Yeah. Um, it looks really cumbersome. It looks horrible. It looks like a bit of a bodge. Mm. You know, some have got lowering blocks. You use these big cross members. Yeah, so, yeah. So because we had the car in pieces, had the opportunity. So I, I welded in these brackets yep. into the tunnel. It's also strengthened on the inside, so oh. hopefully that pulled through. Okay. And then what I did is I made a mount up. So this was all made in house. Um, we used an original isolator. I think that's the only off the shelf item on the gearbox mount. Yeah. But it's just a nicer, tidier cleat. And with the car being so low, yeah. it's just another thing that would catch you that's know, it. when you drive the car going over bumps and things possibly. That's it, yeah, I think, well, it's hard to tell what's lower the exhaust or the mount, but Neva's sort of poking out the bottom yeah, yeah. Or, or protruding down here. So yeah, it's a really nice and neat way to do it. And also moving on to his gearbox, that's been modified as well to to suit his application. Yeah, so I didn't want to use an internal hydraulic clutch cylinder. Yeah, They can be problematic, uh, difficult to set up and shim up sometimes. I mean, it can be done, but they're just a pain. And if you have an issue, you've got to pull the box out. Yeah. So this is actually just a standard Land Rover Lucas part, right? off the shelf part, probably 15, 20 quid. Yeah. And um, what we did, because of the RS bell housing, you have the um, left hand drive side for the starter motor which is not being used we basically tig welded in a mount for that yeah. we made our own adjustable rod and made a window in the side so we can adjust the clutch as well but if that fails it's a you know half hour job to replace it yeah yeah that's brilliant i like how you've done that and then we've also added a gearbox drain so when the gearbox is built we can change the gearbox oil without uh, taking the box out and draining it through the, the top or out the back of the uh, output shaft yeah um, and actually the gearbox is a 3j um, gearbox internally, right? So it's got close ratio straight cut gears in there, straight cut, all right. yeah. Brilliant. Um, and we specified it with a different first gear because with a big cam, mm -hmm. um, if you use what comes as standard, it can be that quite tall for the road yeah. and you can bog down a bit. So it is still a taller first, but not as tall as you'd get in a standing kit, right? Okay, and as we move on to the front of the escort, there's loads going on here as well do you want to just tell us a brief overview yeah so uh, on the front then we're using uh, compression struts um, on the front we're also using a group 4 anti-roll bar uh, the bill steins actually uh, i should have mentioned we had gas golds on the back right but they've got so many adjustments so i like things simple mm -hmm. so i went back to the old school bill steins so we've got bill steins all around yeah and these aren't the 2.8 capri struts that people convert mm -hmm. uh, these are actually factory uh, group 4 struts with the threads cut in right you know much better um harder to get hold of strut now i think yeah um, but i just like to keep everything simple and old school really so mm -hmm. that we can work with the car um another nice thing that we've done I don't know whether I should say giving all my secrets away, <laughs> but we've got shortened billet steering arms, so we've got a lot more lock on the car. So okay. when, if it tends to slip sideways, yeah, not through my driving, <laughs> <laughs> but um, you've got a lot more lock on the front as well. Yeah, okay. Um, with those shortened steering arms, and then we're I running them, yeah. um, Wilwood front brakes, cross yep. drilled, and on the back we've got Cosworth brakes. I'm sure we could talk about the Escort all day, but let's have a little look around the other vehicles that are in his workshop. Okay, so during lockdown there wasn't a lot to do, but yep. we've probably got one of the best toy shops we could have, yeah. having a workshop. So me and Jacob built this hot rod during lockdown. The story behind this was um, I had the engine in gearbox, although I rebuilt the engine because it wasn't any good. I bought it rebuilt. It's running a small block Chevy V8. Mm -hmm. It's probably around about 300 horsepower. Right, okay. Um, not massive horsepower, but when we're running cross fly tires, and a Model A front end yep. with a single leaf spring yep. and a steering box, it's more than too powerful for this car. I bet it is. Um, the other challenge with this car was we we made it manual. So it runs a five-speed Cosworth T5 manual gearbox. Okay. Lots of modifications to make that work. Not a lot of room. It's not built for comfort, it's built for speed. And we use it Shit. for vintage drag racing, which it's not competitive that there's any prizes or trophies. Mm -hmm. It's just a group of people that are into this sort of thing. Uh, we race uh, race the waves. We've done that twice. Right. Uh, we just did the MPH drags over in Corby at an uh, REF Dean Fort. Okay. Um, we basically go and race with other like-minded people and just try and blow them up. Now it is very bare in here, as you could imagine, but it does have a mod con. It's got his airbag there. <laughs>
What's the story with these these headlights then that you're just telling me about? We do drive this on the road occasionally. Um, it's not the most comfortable thing. Because <laughs> uh, of its age, it doesn't need things like indicators and seat belts. But I wanted to have a period looking headlamp, yeah. but have modern lights. So what I did is I bought, I measured inside and I bought some Harley Davidson replacement LED lamps, which also have integral indicators. Yep, got ya. Ah, uh, look at that. <laughs> And moving on, there is another Mark Westcourt in here and Darren's just going to talk a little bit more about this. Okay, so this is one of our good friend's cars that we do some work for. Um, we don't do a lot of customer work, we're quite fussy, we're fortunate that we can be. Yeah. Um, so this car is originally an RS2000, it's got a flat top on it. Um, it's actually got a Gary Martin back end in it, so well known fabricator and suspension expert in the Escort world and everything. Yep. Um, we actually fitted a new engine to this and gearbox, uh, converted to a Type 9, 5 speed, and we fitted a new engine which came from Evans Power or Stephen Evans. Stevie. Right, yeah. Um, and it's a 2.2 Pinto. Brilliant. So quite a rare beast to be seen now. Lovely. Um, a lot of the other work is done by the customer, so you can see um, Paul does like to do a lot of hands-on stuff when there's something that he needs to workshop for or whatever and needs a hand. We're actually changing the carburetors for him and helping him with that. Yeah. And I think Jacob fitted a set of tyres for him as well the other day, just while it was here. So, oh, um, yeah, so it's basically a check over since he had the engine and then it's going back on the rolling road as well to be set up oh. again. Ah, oh, right. What sort of brake horsepower would this be running? Um, well, originally this made 209 brake horsepower. Wow. <laughs> so, and I think that was at about 6,600. So it's not a really high revving engine yep. um, so much. It's really torquey. It's yeah. got a lot of torque with the extra capacity helps with that. Um, and this is the old school 2.2, so it's got an off offset crank and it's running uh, Fiesta 1.6 diesel Conrods, which are heavily oh. modified to work in a Pinto. Right, okay. Not so economically viable these days because yeah. it's sort of off, off the shelf items. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's really interesting to know. Right, so we've had a look around their workshop and now let's have a look at the heart of the business and what they do to restore carbs start from the beginning um, but this is where we put the carburetors together we also okay. build engines in here occasionally um, yeah. when we need to build an engine uh, we won't go in there but this is more of our processing area so this is where we do a lot of the processes that are needed to restore the carburetors and yeah. clean and service them yeah um, so we've got our vapor blaster we've got mm -hmm. ultrasonic tanks we've got a dry blaster not that we use a dry blaster on um, carburetors yeah because uh, it's too aggressive and um, then we've got a hot parts chemical wash just where you're stood as well. Yeah. Um, actually, another set of carburetors just came in from the Lotus. We do a lot of cars, uh, a lot of Lotus cars. Okay. So a lot of carburetors, we've got loads of customers with Lotus. So new Weber carbs up there. Um, this is some of our refurbished stock. Right. We've normally got 10 to 15 sets of refurbished carburetors. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of the customers where cars with had carburetors uh, or Webers as standard or Delortos, they want the original equipment, they don't want the new ones. Yeah. So a lot of these go off and go on Lotuses and things like that where they had them fitted from factory. So these are restored ones. Um, yep. I've got some on the bench I can show you as well. Yeah. Uh, this is our graveyard box. Right. So just like you would break a car, yep. we can still use some parts on carburetors. Okay. Um, I mean, these are the kind of things that we see sometimes. So people will probably be interested when they're looking at carburetors. Um, you can see the high level of corrosion inside. Yes, yeah. Obviously, once you get pitting on the inside of the carburetor, mm -hmm. um, it basically renders the oh, carburetor wow. un unserviceable. Yeah. You know, all these orifices are calibrated and designed to do a job in a yeah. specific way. But there are parts that we can still use from. Um, I'll show you actually, um, I've got one that I saved so I can show my customers. Um, so I've got some top covers here. So to give you an idea, this would be the type of finish that we get on a good top. This yeah. is a serviceable top, we can use that yeah. as a replacement. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we get the float pins are snapped, but we can repair those as well. Right, okay. Um, but this is what the carburetor looks like when it's been cleaned. I see, yeah. yeah. This is serviceable, right. it's okay on the inside, yeah. so it's cosmetic, but would you really want that on your car? That's it, yeah, you can um, see there's quite a lot of pitting on there. Yeah, yeah, and we just use this to show people that if you've got this type of corrosion, mm -hmm. then basically this is what, we can't put back material, we can only clean it. Yeah, so you could see that inside the, the car? Yeah, when I see that sort of white 
oxidisation. Yeah. I know once we remove it, we're going to have pitting yeah. on the carburetor. Yeah. Sometimes you get away with it, depends how long it's been there, if it's just mm -hmm. surface. Yeah. But if it's been there for an extended period, it's no good. What are these ones? Are they new ones? Are they ones that have been restored? Uh, well, they might look new. Hopefully they do. They do look um, new, yeah. These are actually uh, refurbished carburetors yep. that we've done. We've got different sets here. Um, both of these are 48s. Right. Um, but there is a difference. So mm -hmm. these ones are, are Italian 48s, you can see, okay. uh, over yep. Italy. Yep. So these are the earlier carburetors made from Italy. Um, they're probably over 30 years old. Mm -hmm. They've come up lovely. Uh, these are the later Spanish set. Yeah. Um, so you can see here, made in Spain. Yeah. So same functional carburetor basically, um, but made in different factories because the factory moved to Spain about thirty years ago. Okay. Yeah. That's um, interesting. So if you buy a new carburetor, it'll be a Spanish-made one. Doesn't okay. mean it's inferior. Yeah. But people do prefer the Italian ones. There's oh. this old culture about the Italian ones, the original ones. Interesting. Um, and also, if you had them as original equipment on the car, that's what you want. Yeah. So talking about that, these are original 40 DCOEs mm -hmm. made in Italy. Yep. They're a type 18, so these were fitted to Lotus Lands and Lotus Twin Cans, things like that, so okay. valu quite valuable carburetors. But these are even rarer because these are so early, these are probably at least 50 years old, if mm -hmm. not more, because if you notice here, these have got brass shafts. If I just show you one of these ones again, it's got a steel shaft. Yes, yeah, I yeah. see. So these have got a brass shaft in, that's very soft material, as you know, so yep. generally people damage these in service, they can twist, mm, and, yeah. and to get a set to this condition, I mean, you know, you would think that was near enough a new carburetor, you yeah. know. And the finish we go for as well, we don't make them shiny. No, yeah. We make it like original equipment. Yep. We use all the original screws, yep. um, so they're not shiny chrome screws, mm -hmm. and everything that we put into the carburetor is genuine Weber parts. Yeah. Okay, so when it comes to when you restore and service these carbs, um, what are you actually doing to them? So basically they go through our uh, basic servicing, uh, hot wash, vapor glassing, ultrasonic clean. Mm -hmm. um, but one thing that we do, which no one else can do, is we get our own service kits, uh, genuine service kits. They're bespoke to us, we've tailored them. So the uh, normal service kit that you'd be able to get from Weber off their shelf would be just over 20 parts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you'd be able to do some servicing on your on your carburetors but our service kits come with over 60 parts right so we can go right through the carb you know do a lot more you could buy all the stuff that you would um, get in our service kits but then it's probably about five times the price and you'd have to look through all the parts um, so yeah. yeah if you wanted a service kit or you wanted to service your carbs uh, we do a good job so when it comes to the clientele and where these carbs are going and what they're used on can you tell me a bit more about that yeah, so obviously we started in England, um, all of our customers were in England, but as we got bigger and bigger, it became more of a international service that we can have. So we've been sending carbs and servicing carbs for people around the world, Australia, America, Canada, and the list goes on really. I couldn't name all of them off the top of my head. Uh, but our clientele ranges from people that are just restoring their cars, uh, maybe they want new carbs or they want to keep their carbs original to their car. And we even get um, different customers such as uh, rally drivers. So a lot of the rally drivers in Southern Ireland will either uh, buy carburetors from us or mm -hmm. they'll want us to service theirs. So yeah, our clientele has a big range of countries, so the internationality of it, and also the um, different customers, depending on the restoration or if they run it in their cars. Yeah. These are the carburetors that we've uh, supplied for you, Mitch. So this is like a, a deal that you supply, isn't it, and to advertise yeah, that's online? Right. Yeah, so we're very passionate about Fords, but we like all classic cars. Yeah. Uh, anything retro classic, we can. We actually enjoy seeing people's passion. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't matter what level you're at, what car you've got. You know, if you come with an Austin Allegro, we'd probably still enjoy to see it because you don't see yeah. those cars on the road. That's it. But because we're primarily Ford biased. Yeah. Um, we put a kit together, mm -hmm. so this is two genuine Weber 45s, which you've asked for. Yeah. Uh, we do the Weber Webcon genuine linkage. Uh, one of the biggest problems we see is these cheap Chinese linkages you can buy on eBay, mm -hmm. a lot cheaper. Yeah. Uh, but And then we've got the Pinto manifold with all the fittings in there as well. And we can you can take these out of the box yourself if you want, we'll have a look. Yeah, lovely, yeah. Um, but what we try to do is there's a lot of people doing these cheap. Mm -hmm. Um, to be for us to be competitive and get our name out there as well, 
Um, we put a package together, but only using quality items, so a decent linkage. Yeah. And we're still the cheapest in the country. Just take one of them out. Wow. <laughs> there we go. You can see, as uh, Darren was saying earlier, these are newer type of see, made in Spain, but they are brand new that these guys have supplied to me. And uh, yeah, I think two of them on the side of the Pinto will look really nice. I've always had a passion for cars for mm -hmm. some reason, ever since I could speak or, you know, I was always uh, interested in cars. My uncles used to race cars, I used to go and watch them as a kid. Right. Um, I did an apprenticeship in a Ford garage, funnily enough, probably why I'm obsessed with Fords. <laughs> uh, but I was fortunate enough when I got to about 25, I got to the level of master tech in the workshop, I went back to college mm -hmm. and I started working for car manufacturers, so at the head offices doing technical kind of work. Mm -hmm. And then from there, I, after quite a long career doing that kind of thing, um, I then started working for myself. Mm -hmm. And I still do consultancy for car manufacturers in the technical capacity, technical training, um, other kind of technical things. The business here, well, Joker was coming up for leaving school. Um, he's, you know, he's not necessarily your normal kid. He's not on Xbox all the time. He was always here from sort of age of 10 or 12 working on cars. He's got his yeah. own car, hot rod he's building as well. And I started looking at other things that we could do. We used to do restoration as well. I kind of steered away from that. And we wanted another thing to do after lockdown. Yeah. Um, so we started doing component restoration, which we always kind of always did anyway. But, yeah. Um, not at a big level. We just kind of more did it for ourselves. Um, and then we got into the carburetors, and we just got busier and busier with the carburetors. Now we actually, unlike other car restoration companies, we only actually restore and rebuild side draft carburetors or their down draft equivalents. So that could be IDAs or the um, Delorto equivalent. Yeah. Um, it's purely because we don't have such high demand for SU, Strongbergs, those kind of things. We probably couldn't be as competitive. We do do a service for those customers uh, where they can send us in a stripped carburetor. We clean it so it looks like this mm -hmm. and they can reassemble it. Yeah. Um, and we do that for a lot of other restoration companies. Um, but just because our work speaks volumes, yeah, you know, we don't need to necessarily advertise so much. Before Brexit, we used to import a lot of parts from Europe. Um, there is a company over there that does quite high quality um, stuff. But we're fortunate now to be part of Weber, mm -hmm. you know, official Weber dealer. Um, and that's really who we are. That's brilliant to hear about the carbs and what you do to restore them. Uh, is there anything else that you're working on at the moment or any projects? Yeah, well, we've got quite a special project um, that came about, um, I don't know if you know him personally, but a really good friend of ours, Stephen Evans or Stiggy, he's a well-known uh, drifter, uh, campaigns a KP60 Starlet with an NA Cosworth engine in it. Uh, unfortunately, he had a few health issues, quite serious uh, a couple of years ago now. Um, and he unfortunately had a stroke and a couple of heart attacks, which was totally out of the blue. And um, during his recovery, uh, we've got an Anglia that you might have seen out there. You can take a shot of that in a yeah. second. So it's up in the mezzanine. And um, he just messaged me and said, what are you doing with that old Anglia? And I said, I don't know, Steve. We've had it 10 years. We'll get to it one day and we'll build it into a car. And he said, how about we go drag racing and I help and we do it together and I sponsor you. And then we just got talking. Mm -hmm. And we, I thought, this is a great idea. I said, Steve, neither of us got any money to fund this. We need to think, be clever about it. So we, so we decided that we would do it for no money. And when I say do it for no money, what we did is we looked for parts that we had lying around. So yeah. um, I said, Steve, have a look and see what you've got. I'll have a look and see what I've got and we'll see what we can do. So we found a four speed straight cut gearbox found a good use set of forged pistons. Um, I found a set of steel con rods as well. One of them is actually not the same make, but they mm -hmm. all weigh the same. Um, so the car itself, because we're trying to not spend money, it's called the Penny Pincher. <laughs> and we are gonna get it built at some point. It's kind of a long drawn out process. And then the engine, because of the con rods, we've called that odd rod. Yeah. So actually stood just next to you on the stand, so Steve put this together, Stiggy. Yeah. yeah and it's what he wanted to do, and it was it was nice of him to do that for us. Mm -hmm. um, and he's heavily involved with like the planning and sourcing of free parts. So yeah. if anybody's got any free parts, they want to do 
donate to our drag racing project. Yeah. Um, so Evans Power, uh, Stephen Evans. Uh, so this, like my car, which is over 200 horsepower, is a two litre block. Mm -hmm. So a good two litre block. It's got a used set of forged pistons with new rings. It's got a reground dowelled crank for the flywheel, all new bearings, new oil pump. Everything internally is new, yeah. but we repurposed a set of forged pistons and a set of rings. Uh, Steve did all the cylinder head work. It's got a BF63, again, second hand cam, yeah. but it's quite a grunty cam. This is probably only going to be around about 180, maybe 190 horsepower, mm -hmm. but the Anglia will be mainly fiberglass panels. Um, and we're just going to have it in primer. It's going to be scruffy, built out of things that we've discarded and got lying around the workshop. Yeah, yeah. Me and Steve will drive it for fun, but Jacob, being the lightest of the bunch, yeah. he's going to be the primary driver, and we're going to take it to Santa Pod and we're just going to have a laugh. But we've not really spent any money on it. That's brilliant. So that's yeah. what that's the next thing for us. You yeah, know, that's what we're working on. I think that concludes this video nicely. Uh, thank you for sourcing my new carbs and showing me around. Uh, really enjoyed learning about what you guys do. And I'll leave all your links in the description box below. So thank you very much. Yeah, thank thanks you. very much.